Hi YouTube, it's me, Mel from Mel's Health, the girl that says she's gonna make regular videos and then disappears for months at a time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but hi, uh, welcome to the channel. This is Mel's Health. I'm Mel and I make sporadic content about my continued uh, journey on recovery from pulmonary embolism, AKA blood clots in the lungs. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back and watching this video. And if you're new here, there is a plethora of videos on this channel from when I used to go into a lot more depth back in the day about different topics and everything that I was experiencing in the recovery from having blood clots. So I left the channel a few months ago after telling you guys that I'd had a VQ scan and it gave me a perfusion mismatch. And I was waiting to see a respirologist about what the next steps would be after hearing that and presenting the other symptoms that I talked about in my last video. Um, in regular speak, that means I had a nuclear medicine scan that looks at the airflow in the lungs and the blood flow in the lungs. And then they look for blockages, anomalies, which they refer to as a mismatch. Um, which I had um, because the blood isn't actually getting around the lungs where it should be. Um, when they did the scan, it was mirrored basically to the scan that I'd had the year that I was diagnosed, showing that the blood still isn't getting to those areas of the lungs that were originally blocked by the clots. So the first thing the respirologist said about that was just like, yep, yeah, looking at those scans, the blood vessels that are in those areas have completely tapered off. Um, so that is why the blood is not traveling to those areas of the lungs anymore. So I did indeed have a couple of appointments with the respirologist and we didn't really find him the most helpful human being, to be honest. Um, he didn't seem overly invested in the case. He wasn't overly helpful. Um, it just wasn't one of those pleasant conversations where you really feel like the doctor is trying to put all, they're all in to like getting stuff uh, sorted out for you. Um, so where we landed on a few months ago after the first appointment was just that things can obviously change over the years and the fact that I still have like persistent symptoms um, like the little aches, pains, niggles that I explained in the last video, um, getting very tired on exertion, um, not overall but more like the breathlessness from it. Um, we ended up having to uh, just do a repeat of basically all the tests that I'd done before because he wanted to see whether things had actually changed over the last couple of years from me doing all those other tests um, over time. Um, so up until like last week where I completed all the repeats, um, I had a CT with contrast again, um, blood work to look at kidney function. I did uh, a lung function test, which included like a walking portion this time. Um, and then two weeks ago, I had an echocardiogram, which is the ultrasound of the heart. Um, and shock horror, um, as comes back every time, everything was in normal ranges, um, which is a good thing. I'm never gonna complain about that. It's not like I want anything sinister to come out of these tests. I'm glad everything is coming back as healthy, but it's like, if everything is in its normal range and everything is just looking normal, except for the fact that the blood isn't getting around where it needs to go, is, is that purely the explanation as to why I still feel this way and get these symptoms? Um, and I'm still kind of left in limbo, to be honest. So because everything is coming back within normal ranges, it isn't really sparking the interest of this respirologist. Like he just seems like the most uninterested bloke and we're just kind of wasting his time. Um, it's, a, it's really annoying. So I went back to my GP because she's lovely and she listens and uh, without breaching uh, patient confidentiality, she did actually say that she is working with another female patient who is even 10 years younger than me, but experiencing everything similar. Um, it's the only information she gave me, obviously. Um, but she had referred her to some specialists in the city. Um, so she also referred me. Um, to these same specialists because they might be able to just provide more answers, which it will be great if they pick up the referral. So these guys are going to be like the gold standard for anything kind of like deep seated within the lungs that might potentially be wrong, or they will have seen cases before that will, you know, might be similar to mine, or I just have any, any similarities at all. They'll just have a wealth of knowledge around these, uh, around this topic, um, and might be able to say what things will look like long term, um, what the actual effects are of me having these tapered off blood vessels at, um, in my lungs and the blood not getting around, is that causing X, Y, and Z? Um, they can do the catheterization if they deem that necessary. Obviously that's a bit invasive and they're not gonna wanna do it unless it's absolutely necessary where they catheterize you through your veins into your lungs and they can test the pressures within the blood vessels to see whether is that causing any knock-on effect to your heart or anything like that. Usually they wouldn't do that because all of the tests that I've had so far, they are testing for the things that can lead up to needing the catheterization to do those tests. And with me, everything is coming back normal, um, which is a great thing. 
but um, the absolute gold standard is that catheterization just to rule out hypertension and anything related to that. So I would really like them to pick up the referral um, just to actually hear it from people that do this day in, day out. They would have seen so many other patients and they've got such a, a wealth of experience when it comes to um, what things can look like long term, basically. So like I said, a little bit in limbo while I wait to see what happens with those referrals um, and then I'll still catch up with my GP and obviously get any any uh, points of reference from her as well and things that we can carry on with. Um, but within myself, um, I think that I just kind of let last year go by, to be honest. Like I look at it as a bit of a, of a wasted year where I just, uh, I was just really lazy and not really feeling it, to be honest. Didn't really have much motivation to get out and do stuff compared to the years prior. Um, so I've kind of started on a, it's a bit of a new year's resolution type thing, but um, I don't really want to call stuff like that. I just want to have like lifestyle changes. But what I've done, since January so far, um, is uh, try and have more of a routine and just be a bit more active day to day. And I'm gonna build on that throughout you know, the winter and then hopefully when um, the weather gets better, I can go outside a bit more uh, and just feel, generally feel a bit better. So what I've done so far uh, for January is uh, I've set my alarm half an hour early every single day. Uh, before work um, and I, I bought a walking pad last year I don't know if I put that in any of my videos um, but I've been just forcing myself out at that time in the morning because I've got to get up for work anyway so I just get up 30 minutes earlier than normal go on the walking pad for like 20 to 25 minutes every single morning um, and then I've still got time to like pop in the shower do whatever and then um, start work lucky for me I work fully remote I really don't have to go to the office very much. I haven't actually been to the office, I don't think, since like November or October last year, um, which is great. So I am lucky that everything is just like really easy within my apartment. So like I said, just get up, do 20, 25 minutes of a fast paced walk. I can just head straight into the bathroom and then straight back into the room for my office. And I've done all that before 8 a.m. in the morning. I've already got a few thousand steps in. I got my heart rate up a bit and then I'm kind of a bit more ready for the day. Um, so I'm really hoping I stick to that. I'm doing well so far. I keep thinking to myself, well, I have to get up for work anyway. So what difference does 30 minutes make? And then just force myself, whether I'm going fast or not, at least I'm walking and doing something during the day, um, getting those steps up, getting the heart rate going and just feeling a little bit better. Because um, prior to this, working at home, even though it's a great thing and you feel a lot more relaxed and, and everything like that, and it's great for the, the condition that I've been in the last few years, I am sat at a desk for eight hours a day. And then usually in the evenings, especially when the weather's crappy or even in summer, to be honest, I'm then sat at my desk again for hours in the evening playing computer games. Um, so I'm just not moving. So I was doing like sub 500 steps a day constantly, unless we had to go out to do grocery shopping or something, or if we decided to walk to Starbucks to get a coffee in the evening, that was about the only activity that I was getting regularly. So um, I've kept with this routine so far and I'll try and uh, get a bit fitter in general this year because I'm only getting older and fatter. And I can't really do anything about getting older, but I can change my activity levels and try and feel a bit better about myself. So I am probably going to document that a bit more. And I've put a few biking shorts on this channel. It's completely separate to the other content that I do. But if you look at the shorts on this channel, you'll just see a couple of biking clips that I put in um, from last summer. Uh, I was just kind of playing around with that feature and, uh, and seeing what people liked. Um, but if you want to see more of that content as I document me getting a bit more active and what terribly <laughs> terrible that might look like um, with me being a breathless mess, then, uh, then let me know. There's another uh, goal that I'm kind of setting for this year. And uh, I think I've said before that I live in a place called Squamish in Canada and there's a famous massive piece of rock called the Chief. Um, and I haven't been up it in four years and it's like a hike that people just do here. It's just, it's just renowned. It's just this massive piece of granite rock. Um, it's a nice hike. It usually takes about 45 minutes if you're just the average level of, of fitness. Um, but yeah, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done that hike in years now since pre me being diagnosed with it, with any health issues. Um, and, uh, I want to, I want to get up there this year. I want to actually like attempt to get up there and I think I will document that as well just so you can see me being an absolute breathless mess and the fact that I generally, I start to feel tired because I'm breathing so much, but my body doesn't actually feel tired. Like my legs wanna keep going and I don't feel physically absolutely knackered, but I sound horrendous. So maybe if we get some of that on video as well, I can show you guys that it's like, yeah, it's all well and good saying these things, but it's not actually that pretty when you're actually out there doing it looking like an absolute mess. 
In regards to this channel, um, I would like to make a few more regular videos, but I don't just want to make videos for the sake of it. I'd rather document something and then have it relate to being in the recovery from, from blood clots. Um, I do think that is helpful. I do uh, read all the comments that you guys put, so please do continue to comment and share your stories and experiences because it's not just me reading them that takes something from it and appreciates it. I think there's a lot of silent viewers out there that just, they, they can get something from it too. Um, the whole point of this channel was to just like put some information into the ether and it will just find people to have a common ground with and see what experiences other people are having because um, I still very much appreciate it when I find someone who is having similar experiences and I can kind of take what information they have and what might have happened to them and then present that to the doctors as well and, and kind of keep that going forward. Um, it's, all, it's always just it's a really good to have that kind of that kind of network. Um, so. The plug that always happens at the end of the video, please do hit like or subscribe to the channel because it will only push it out to more people. I've seen really good traction on some of the more popular videos and it's just getting people into the channel who are so appreciative that they found that kind of information. And unfortunately, blood clots and everything like that, they're kind of becoming a bit more prevalent at the minute. It's a bit of a hotter topic. Um, so it'd be great if more people can find this information and then maybe create a network and just, just interact uh, through this platform. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave you there. Try and always keep it short and sweet. I don't just want to ramble on for no reason. Um, but yeah, I will try and make some more regular videos when I hear back from any doctors or referrals in the time being. And as I continue on trying to be a bit more active this year. All right. Okay. See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.